Hey everyone, this is my Ask Me Anything 1000 subscriber celebration. Uh, I know by the time I put this video out, I'm going to probably have over 1100 because so many people subbed so quickly in the last couple of weeks. I wasn't really prepared for this, so thank you for subscribing. And uh, this is only possible because of you guys, so thank you for your support. Um, it's currently raining slash sleeting slash hailing slash snowing outside, so hopefully that doesn't get picked up on the mic because that would really ruin this whole thing. Um, so let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, okay, so let's check out some of your questions that you guys submitted. Okay. We'll go by order of when they were submitted. So the very first question that was submitted was from Zachary. And, oh, it's a, as predicted, a troll question. I wonder how many of those I'm going to get. This should be good. Why are you a fucking piece of shit? Hmm. Well, I don't know why I am. I mean, maybe I was just born this way, or maybe I developed into a fucking piece of shit somewhere along the way. I'm not really sure, but what I would say is if I have always been a fucking piece of shit, that at least going vegan, I'm less of a fucking piece of shit. So, you know, there's some... uh there's some happiness in that regard. Okay, so question number two from Levi. Is it morally justified to kill a serial killer to stop the serial killing? Can we morally kill a human that intends knowingly or unnecessarily to kill hundreds of others every year? I mean... I don't know if we should be killing them. We should definitely be stopping them, right, ahead of time. Like, if we have some kind of warning, we would obviously be obligated to call the police, try to stop this from happening. I mean, if you could prove that somebody was going to kill 100 people and it was, like, you know, going to happen, like, this second, then, of course, I think you could stop them. But if it was just, you know, oh, they were going to kill somebody in four weeks, so I'm just going to shoot you and kill you rather than calling the cops. I mean, I think that would be kind of insane, but I mean, uh, so yeah, I would just, I would call the cops <laughs> before I would start just blasting some guy off and just being like, hey, he was going to kill somebody, I think, you know, so I know it's controversial, just curious your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> legally, I don't think you should, you know, morally, ethically, could you do it? I mean, probably. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I just call the cops, man. Just, just, Levi, just stay away from just killing people if you can get away with it if you can lock them up and let them use you know earth's resources for like the next 50 years in jail that's i guess probably the way to go of course if he's harming animals with his dietary choices in jail then maybe okay you know what i've changed my mind kill the guy just let it be done we don't need this guy on the <laughs> on the face of the earth just get rid of him okay okay you have my permission kill him <laughs> <laughs> okay number three this one is from justin how do you keep your faith in humanity while being in the cesspool of continuously growing carnist degeneration well that's very uh courteous of you justin to think that i actually had faith in humanity to begin with because yeah i kind of lost my faith in humanity a long time before going vegan. Um, yeah, I know it's like not, you know, it's not something good to talk about, you know, like, ooh, you're, you're being misanthropic about humanity, but I totally 
totally am and like i think i'm justified you know i'm not just like you know you know upset with humanity because i just want to be upset with humanity like i'm upset with humanity because they give me reasons to be upset with humanity you know it it always you know fostered from um being like an atheist and just thinking wow like five six of all people on this planet they think that there's like a magical being that like brought everything into existence and they have no proof of it they they think that it's true and they they to them it's a personal truth but it's like it's not you know real like in any objective sense and so yeah i mean like that's kind of what i always thought man most of humanity is just just dumb uh <laughs> and then when you go vegan it's like just like if you were on the edge of the cliff you know you're just you just diving right off of it because yeah it's tough i mean i'm always like going back and forth because you know like joey carpstrong he'll say you know oh i think that most people are good people and it's like in a way i think that that's true but if that's the case then it seems like all we'd have to do is just show everybody you know some slaughterhouse footage and that would be enough to just change people's minds and it just doesn't seem to be the case. And it's like, well, why wouldn't that be the case? Why wouldn't we be able to just show what happens to animals? And that would be all you need if everybody was, you know, was truly good. And I know there's all these other factors that, you know, leads to what people, you know, do in their life and stuff. It just seems like if they truly were good people like that's why i think good people do make the change like i say that all the time like oh good people do go vegan you know i'm trying to you know pound in the idea that like you're a good person so if you want to do what a good person does then you should go vegan because good people don't pay for this obscene level of violence towards the most innocent beings on the whole planet so i mean how do I keep my faith in humanity? I mean, don't really have it to begin with, but uh, I do try to remember that there are good people out there. Uh, and probably the best way to do it is to just not even engage with veganism for a good day or something. Like that's the only way to like replenish that charge of any kind of resemblance of hope for humanity. So yeah, basically, just go do something besides thinking about the state of humanity if you want to feel good about humanity. That's what I would suggest. Question number four. Oh, this one's from Ed. I, I Ed. Okay, well, let's see what Ed has to say. I told him to, to leave me a question, so this is going to be it. What is your opinion on pets? Should we have pets slash domesticated animals at all? Who is to say they want to live with us? I look forward to your response. Well, thank you, Ed, for submitting this. Um, yeah, I mean, I think pets are, are good to have, I mean, companion animals, you know, if we are doing what's always in the best interest of the animals, I mean, I think that's, that's really what we should be looking at. I mean, most people I think do treat their dogs and, you know, cats and they, they would you know do anything for them. They treat them in the, what's in their best interest. Um, some people don't, though, and uh, it's like if we can definitely get rescued animals that were otherwise going to, you know, die a lonely, sad death or whatever, like, let's let's do that. Um, the two dogs, like, I've had in my life are from breeders, and, like, there's no reason for that. Um, so the next dog that I would get would be, um, obviously, a rescue dog, um, and I, I would have my oh no controversial have my dog be plant-based you know um because there's no reason why we have to harm uh a bunch of other animals just to sustain our one companion animal um i mean it's kind of crazy it's like i want to do what's in the the uh the dog's best interest of course but i also don't want to condemn hundreds of other animals to have to be you know killed just to go and sustain my one animal when we know that dogs can be healthy on a fully plant-based diet. So 
Uh, I mean, as far as cats go, I would never have a cat because they are, you know, carnivores, essentially. There is a way, I think, maybe kind of to go and integrate, you know, them having a plant based diet, but not really sure how, you know, there's not. I don't think many studies done on that. I think something just came out like maybe in the last month that that said that it isn't as bad as what people think it is. And maybe it is okay to go and uh, make them plant based. Uh, Like I watched a Mike the Vegan video and that was interesting. But still, I've never even liked cats. So, I mean, but if you like a cat and, you know, if you're going to rescue a cat that's otherwise suffering, you know, do what's do what you can you know that's what i would say uh yeah there's definitely some tricky situations uh i know there's there's ways that you could go and buy like you know i mean not buy but uh find meat that's you know gonna be otherwise wasted and spoiled like at stores and stuff and you could just like take that from the stores and like in theory you you, you could go and you know as long as you're not paying for it then you're not really Funding slaughterhouses and that kind of thing. So, uh, but yeah, who's to say they want to live with us? Um, yeah, that's, that's something I've thought about for like dogs and stuff. Like some dogs like to play with other dogs and stuff. And I've thought about that with my mom's dog. And like you know, he's not he's never put in a cage. He always has the whole house to roam around in. But like at the end of the day, he is still like a prisoner to my mom's house. And like, what if he wanted to go somewhere else or do something and there's not really a way of knowing, I guess, but, um, yeah, I mean, I would just, that's why going with rescue dogs is the best thing that you can do because they'd rather be, you know, stuck in a nice big house with, you know, a loving family than, you know, in a cramped cage and some kennel or something. So, so yeah, I mean, do what you can get a rescue animal. Obviously that's what I would suggest. Okay, this one is from Consensual Strength, who I definitely recognize as a vegan account on YouTube. Okay, how did you learn, or how are you continuing to learn, how to make slash edit videos? Um, There's a bunch of questions here. Okay, Um, yeah, it's just something, you know, not... um, I guess a millennial, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so it's like I've kind of grown up with computers. I do remember a time before computers, so I'm not like that fresh. But uh, yeah, uh, I've always been making videos. I was, remember using Windows Movie Maker back in like 2008 or something, I guess, 2007, six. Uh, but yeah, if there's, um, I, I use adobe premiere now but uh yeah if there's anything that you don't know how to do because that program's kind of uh higher end where it's it's not necessarily just for like rookies where i think maybe they still have windows movie maker out there and stuff which is much more simplistic and and easy if you just want to put together a real quick video but uh yeah if there's something i don't know how to do i just like everybody else i go to youtube uh that's where you know, I, I just wanted to find out how to make something fade to black and white because I know there's a black and white feature on Adobe Premiere. And I'm like, but I don't want it to just be black and white. There was no way to like put in uh, like keyframes to go and make it transition. So I'm like, how do I do that? So I looked it up and sure enough, I did it. And uh, yeah, YouTube's definitely a great uh, source for always learning how to do new things. Favorite activists, online or otherwise? Well, obviously, I'm the best that there is out there, for sure. Uh, but, you know, maybe a close second would be Joey Carbstrong. He's he's one of the best, for sure. Like, he's dedicated. He's always very much so on the animal side, whereas there's other activists that maybe, you know, I don't know aren't as firm in their stance like i love earth and ed but a lot of times i just want to be like just 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 tell them this just don't be don't be sympathetic to them just say what needs to be said you know call him an animal abuser which joey's kind of gotten away from that a little bit uh 
like in the recent years, which is probably a good thing because sometimes maybe he was a little bit too aggressive, but it was kind of funny to watch him just like lay into people sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. So yeah, I, I would go with uh, Joey Carbstrong, but uh, I definitely like uh, Natalie uh, Fulton. Sorry, Natalie Fulton. I'm used to calling her the juggling vegan. Um, Cause I definitely think that there should be more uh, women in the movement. Uh, that's cause a lot of times it is just like white guys. So like, I definitely think, you know, um, having more of a diversity in the community is, is good because, you know, why not? Right. We need different people saying different things, different ways. So, um, what's your diet? Like key staples, favorite homemade meals, preferably easy ones. Well, if you knew me at all, um, <laughs> you would know I'm definitely not a foodie kind of guy. I don't like, I don't love food or anything. I always thought I could never go vegan because I was such a picky eater and I only ate like five things essentially. And I'm still kind of that same way, but I just eat a vegan version. So it's like, actually it was kind of easier because if I had to go and transition like 50 things that I liked, that would be way harder. It's like, oh, I only have five things I like. Oh, that's easy. Um, yeah, I'm definitely not, you know, I wish I could say this. Um, I'm definitely not a whole foods plant-based kind of guy, you know, plant-based obviously, but like, like, yeah, I, you know, I eat, you know, bananas and grapes and stuff, but like, almost all my meals are like processed, unhealthy stuff that like you shouldn't be eating. And one of these days I'm going to have to actually change that because it's going to catch up with me and stuff. And, and, uh, but yeah, I definitely like, you know, anything with cheese in it, I always liked. And I still like all of those. Um, I always, since being a little kid, it was always three things, peanut butter, potatoes, and cheese. Those were the three things that are like in every single meal, essentially. So, uh, you know, my favorite homemade meal, like it, it just would be simply like mashed potatoes. Like that's the easiest thing to do. It fills me up. People are always like, oh, I'm going to be hungry if I go vegan. It's like, have you never had mashed potatoes? Like I just like stuff my mouth with mashed potatoes endlessly. And it's like the best thing in the world. Um, yeah, but I, my favorite meal though, like for sure would be like mac and cheese. Um, I get Annie's at Target and I, I would say that that's better than like Kraft mac and cheese that I used to eat. Um, I always love mac and cheese, Kraft mac and cheese. And I'd say that's, that's like a slight upgrade from that. I'd say that's probably like my favorite meal to probably eat because it's just so, so good. So juicy. So Freaking awesome is what I would say. Um, and what made you vegan? Was it a single video or a bunch of seeds planted over the years? What do you think is most likely to make others vegan? Uh, I'll start with the last question there first. Um, I'd say threaten them for sure. Threaten their existence. Tell them if you don't go vegan, you're going to die. Um, that's a good approach, I think. But uh, <laughs> if I'm being honest, uh, I would not do that. Um, yeah, you just have to talk to people. That's, that's the most frustrating thing is to have to talk to somebody as if everything that you've heard that they're saying is something unique. And that that's something that always like bothered me. Like since I was like a little kid, I'm like, I could never be a teacher because I couldn't stand hearing the same questions year after year after year, teaching the same thing. Like that would just be like torture, I think. And that's exactly what we have to do. I have to he hear about lions 1,500, thousand, million, trillion times. And I have to pretend like, oh yeah, lions. Okay, here's the reason why that makes no sense. Right? So it's like you have to talk to people. You have to give them the time to, to say things and you respond to them. And then just like, go away for like a week and let them eventually bring that up in their own mind. And they'll start to think, Oh yeah, that's true. The, you know, lions 
don't have moral agency and they they are obligate carnivores oh yeah that makes no sense right um so yeah you need to give them time too i mean that's that's like a big thing um going back to your earlier questions here what made you vegan was it a single video um unfortunately it was uh <laughs> cosmic skeptic where he's now no longer vegan unfortunately we need meat to be to be healthy but uh <laughs> Yeah, it was his Israel speech, and that was in November of 2019 I watched that. And I remember the exact moment when it all kind of started to click. I was, um, Ed, if you're still watching, he's a co-worker of mine, he asked the question before. But uh, I'd go to E-Cafe, um, this restaurant in downtown Buffalo. Um, I would go there and... Always order a grilled cheese sandwich, right? That's It was the cheapest thing you could get, and I'm all about saving money and stuff. And I'd order a grilled cheese sandwich, and I'm there, like, munching away on this nice, yummy grilled cheese sandwich. And I'm watching Alex talk about how there's no justification and how you don't need to hear the sounds of the slaughterhouse because you already know what it sounds like. You don't You, you don't need to. It's. It, I mean, I, I do think that you need to. But, like, it's kind of true, like, it's horrific on its own right. Like the images just make it more horrible. And uh, I just remember looking down at my grilled cheese sandwich and I was just like, so incredibly like guilt ridden. I was, I remember just like being disgusted with myself. And uh, yeah, I remember, uh, <laughs> I think I walked, w walked back to work and I, I told, I told my coworker, I'm like, I think I might have to go vegan and, uh, and, you know, <laughs> like admitting it. And then I even warned him, I'm like, Hey, I might, might have, to, I might actually be like one of those, uh, annoying vegans that you, that you see or whatever. If I actually was to take this as seriously as I think it is, you know, need to, you know, needing to be taken. And sure enough, here I am. And, uh, <laughs> a thousand subscribers later, I'm annoying the heck out of a bunch of carnists. So that's great. Oh, how are you so cool? That's the last question by him. Um, I don't think I'm that cool at all. Uh, I'm just somebody trying to speak up for the animals because who else is going to? And it's really snowing outside. Okay, moving on. Question number six. This is from Axel. Axel? I don't know. A-K-S-E. Is that an L? Okay, there's an L. There was just something on my screen that made it look like it was a one. <laughs> okay, so Axel, Axel asks, what do you think about making all non-human animals herbivores and abolishing involuntary suffering? Um, I'm not sure we could. You know, there are such a thing as obligate carnivores. I mean, a lot. I think maybe the majority of animals are herbivores already, so that's great. Abolishing involuntary suffering. I mean, yeah, that'd be great. Um, I think uh, wild animal suffering is something that totally gets lost in the uh, animal rights movement. Because um, that's, you know, a crazy amount of suffering. If you think that animal agriculture is contributing massive amounts of suffering, I mean, this... You know, wild animal suffering has got to be, you know, a hundredfold. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how uh, practicable it would be to actually implement something that would, you know, reduce all <laughs> involuntary suffering. Obviously, that wouldn't be happening today. But um, as Humane Hancock has said, for sure, we could definitely develop something to... Uh, you know, cure rabies, or we can, um, you know, for example, if there was, you know, population boom of deer and stuff, that's what people always say is, oh, we got to keep the population under control. So that's why we have to kill them. It's like, or we could take the totally nonviolent approach and, you know, give them birth control, you know, shoot them with a dart, make it so that they're, you know, infertile and, just like that, boom, you know, solve the problem. I mean, I want to. If I could snap my fingers right now, I would abolish 
involuntary suffering. And that's kind of comes back to the whole God thing where it's like, so I just, I don't understand why, why a God would develop the world this way. You know, it's like, Oh, you need the prey and the, and the predators and stuff. I'd be like, well, no, why did we need that? Why don't we all just like plants and we just run on sunlight and it's just endlessly sunny and we don't have to worry about it. Wow, that would solve a lot of problems, wouldn't it? I think so. Okay, Stephen, what originally made you go vegan? When did you first start? Once again, I think we're all kind of like vegan at heart to some extent. Um, but yeah, Alex's video in Israel, that definitely pushed me over the top. And even then, I, 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 it took me six months before I went vegan. So that's why I don't advocate, obviously, for baby steps. Um, but I understand that that might be what's, you know, required for some people. Some people maybe will just be able to do it the very next day. Boom. But it's like, I kind of, once again, I needed time to just like think it all out. And um, I'd say that Alex is what pushed me up like to like, <laughs> if there's that bucket that has like the hundred points in it. And once you get up to a hundred points, you're vegan. Alex maybe gave me like, 60 or something it probably brought me up to like 90 percent and then watching a couple other uh videos and stuff along the way that's when i was like okay now i'm 100 percent now i i really gotta take this seriously um and the the thing that really did help me was covid um i started working from home and i was like i don't even have the temptation now to go get a slice of pizza or go get grilled cheese at e-cafe anymore I'm at home. I can make all my own meals. I don't even need to like meal prep or anything. I didn't, can just eat from home. So it's like that was such a lucky thing for me to happen. Of course, it you know wasn't good for a lot of people. I mean, I got COVID uh, <laughs> in August and uh, this past August. And of course, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but it did benefit me in regards to it gave me an opportunity to take veganism seriously and uh, allowed me to finally say, you know what, I am going to do this because it's really important to me. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, Wally wants to know more of a lighthearted question here. You have a bowl of white rice. What do you put on top of it to make it awesome? Okay, next question is, okay, I've seen this guy before. I've seen him around too. Uh, what's his name? Ula Pool Kaber? Ula Pool? Kaber? Kabar? I don't know. We'll go with Kaber. Um, I was told eating excess soy would turn me into a woman, but it isn't working. Do I just need to eat more? Yeah. Um, whatever your dosage is, I would just up it 120%. Because eventually, um, the soy will will give you uh, boobs for sure, and you'll you'll n like like it hasn't taken effect for me. I kind of have like a deep voice, but eventually your your voice will start to get higher, and you'll start sounding like a like a full fledged woman. And uh, yeah, definitely just just eat more. Um, you know, you know. Get as much uh, uh, tofu as you can in, in your system. Um, maybe like like a, a gallon of soy milk every day. That would work. Um, yeah, just, just, just dump as much soy as you can. Think soy thoughts um, in, in your dreams. Think of soy like jumping over your head. And you'll be a woman in no time. What is your favorite emoji? And this was asked by somebody with an emoji face. <laughs> My favorite emoji. Um, and let's, I would probably say the monkey with <laughs> the hands over the mouth. <gasps> I can't believe I said that. Because I'm always saying things that I shouldn't be saying. Okay. <laughs> okay, the same person is asking, what is your most pet peeve anti-vegan excuse? 
Okay, well, this video is going to be six hours long if I go into all my pet peeves. But what is, what's the most annoying one to me? I mean, I, sometimes it's like the lion one just because it's just so stupid. But I would probably say plants feeling pain. is It's got to be number one because, first of all, no, they don't. And I can list you like four reasons why they don't feel pain. And then second of all, like through these people's ignorance, they're actually advocating for veganism by bringing up plants feeling pain. Because if they did, you'd be even more morally obligated to go vegan. Because you as a non-vegan are responsible for more plant deaths than me, the vegan who's just eating them directly. These people need to learn about trophic levels and understand that they're causing way more plants to be harmed and it's just like it's just ridiculous not to mention it's a completely i shouldn't say always completely but it seems like it's a totally disingenuous uh excuse that they're just trying to get you like a i i got you a moment appeal to hypocrisy right it's like no, like I, I, I know they're alive. Yes, they don't feel pain. No brain, no central nervous system, no pain receptors, no evolutionary reason why they would. It's like, and then on top of it, even if you were right, that's why they're. It's always my favorite arguments are always the ones that, if you were right, you would actually be more obligated to go vegan. <laughs> like, if you were right, which you're not. Which is why I guess I should want plants to feel pain, because then it would make it more of an obligation to go vegan. It's like, like, and it's like, it's always, it's this ignorance too. It's like, you don't even know that what you're doing is advocating for my position. And then if I point that out to you, you just laugh it off and walk away. And it's like, okay, once again, just proving how genuine you really were with that concern, right? Okay. What? Okay. What is your favorite quote in favor of veganism? Favorite quotes. I have to think about that one. What food do you think they need a vegan version of ASAP? Or one you don't see in stores that often? Um... Again, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to say I don't know. Okay. How do you come up with ideas for your videos? Um, well, I, I used to kidnap uh, content creators and shake them down for ideas, and I'd only feed them vegan food when they gave me good enough ideas, but the cops kind of caught on to me and stuff, so I stopped doing that. But, uh, yeah, I, it, it, it can be hard sometimes. Um, you know, you can definitely look at other uh, content creators. You know, it doesn't have to be vegan creators. You can just look at to see what they're doing. Um, I, I guess I definitely take uh, inspiration from like any like uh, Spider-Man video where it's it's always them taking you know Spider-Man and putting it in a different context or oh it's Spider-Man but he's bald or it's Spider-Man but he's in um, you know Titanic or something right so I'm always trying to like recreate other other videos or other scenarios and trying to like veganize it like I have a a people's court uh, vegan version coming out soon, which uh, that should be fun. Um, where Judge Millian just totally lays into these animal farmers, <laughs> which is great. I try to take my own passions and put a vegan spin on it, like that roller coaster tycoon. You know, it's a game I've loved for 20 years, and now you know I put out a video about it. People's court, love that. Uh, I had a Star Wars video back when I first started my channel. Um, I just try to go and take anything that I that I like. You know, I made a couple Shark Tank videos because I loved watching Shark Tank. So, oh, I'll put a vegan spin on this. 
Um, but yeah, it, it can be hard to uh, come up with ideas. Okay, Luke. Luke wants to know, do you do solo outreach for animal rights? If so, what do you ask slash say? If not, why not? And would you ever do it? I have never done public solo outreach. Um, obviously, I do AV in the summer months. We're currently in the winter months here, so um, got to wait maybe like two more months before I can get back out there. I've thought about this. Um I thought about that for, for Christmas, asking for for a microphone, and my mom gave me money. She gave me um, just cash to go and because I was talking about either buying like a dash cam for my uh, my car. I was thinking about that, and I was like, I don't know if I really want to do that. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I could get one of those microphones that uh, Debugger Brain has, and uh, Natalie Fulton, she has, they both have the same kind of uh, microphones, which I forget what they're called what the uh, name of it is but like that was roughly like 80 or 90 dollars and i was like oh so i could buy that and i could start my own outreach and i'm thinking yeah but like what am i gonna record with my phone and am i gonna sound good or something am i gonna you know not do the animals justice which you know that's a silly excuse but uh so yeah i, I do i would love to do that um it, it, I think everybody should at least you know go out and do AV or something. But I definitely take uh, inspiration from from uh, like uh, there's this one YouTube channel, uh, Thomas Anonymous. He's not very well known, but he's constantly putting out videos, kind of like Cliff Grant's, where it's just him. I, well, I think I think Thomas has at least a camera person who's who records and stuff but it's always him and he's just doing solo outreach and i'm like he's doing that i could easily do that um i think the biggest reason why i I would hesitate doing it is because there's not there's not a place where there's not a place where there's a lot of people at where i live like there's there's no public space that you can that you can go to where there's just a bunch of people walking outside because, you know, in Buffalo, there's like, you know, there's, you know, the end of May to like the beginning of September is the only time that people are like outside and there's no public space that people just walk around. Like I could go to a park or something where there's like four people, but like, I'm always so jealous when I see these videos and like, they're just on a sidewalk and there's people just walking, walking around. And it's like, if I did that any place like downtown Buffalo, it would like, if there's people walking around, it'd be like homeless people. And I'm not going to go bug homeless people about going vegan and stuff. So that's like my biggest problem is like, I need to find some place where I can go. Um, yeah, we currently do our AV outside of like, a um, a farmer's market. Like that's, that's got good traffic, I guess. But, you know, so I, I, I could do that. That's every single weekend, and we only do, like, an AV, like, once a, a month. I'd, um, yeah, I mean, I could. I could I, I could do that. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely something I, I've i thought about doing and I want to do. Um, and, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's definitely something I could do. I think I'd only want to do it, though, if I could, like, record it and upload it. Because, like, that's how you can actually reach, like, you know, thousands of people and stuff. And that's something that's, you know, like, I love Gary Yorofsky for going to all these all these schools. But it's really just recording one speech that turned thousands of, you know, millions, maybe, of people vegan. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd want to record it, I think, for sure. If you care so much about the animals, why do you use your voice to talk harshly to non-vegans instead of consulting them and understanding their positioning since 98% or more of them don't know how bad these industries could be? You should inspire them, not diminish them. That's a very earthling ed um, question. Uh, I'm definitely more of the mindset of do whatever you're good at um you know you can be earthling out if you want and if i want to be joey carpstrong or gary orofsky and be more harsh then i think you should do that too we need 
a bunch of different voices on all ends of the spectrum to speak up for the animals. Um, I'm guessing this person probably is from a certain video is what I would guess. But of course that certain video is showing the horrors that animals go through. So to say that 90% of them don't know how bad these industries are, it's like, well, that wouldn't be true because I'm commenting specifically on a video holding people harshly accountable on a video that you can exactly see how harsh these things are. So, um, and it also depends on what kind of mood I'm in. A lot of times I wake up and I'm like, Oh, you know, have you considered this? Have you considered that? And and trying to speak, you know, compassionately with people. And then there's other days where I'm just like, I don't give a shit. I'm sick of this. Stop abusing animals. Stop bringing up lions. You know, you're a fool. Which I try not to name call or anything like that. But uh, I will call people animal abusers because that's what they are, essentially. Um, you know. And some people are going to be like, oh, that's off-putting. But... Um, I'm a big fan of the radical flank effect where, you know, if I have to be Malcolm X so that people, when they hear Martin Luther King Jr., they say, oh, that guy is more reasonable than the angry vegan that I met before. Oh, I can understand what they're saying now. You know, oops, then actually what I did did work, right? Because I made the the uh, more compassionate Earthling ad type sound more, oh, plausible, oh, yeah, I can get that, oh, yeah, wow, oh, veganism is is this, it is that, oh, okay, I'm gonna go vegan now, right? It's like, I don't think it's, you know, how many, how many people did Joey Carpstrong turn vegan because of his approach? Yeah, and you can make an argument that maybe he could have made more people vegan, 10% more vegan by not doing that. It's like, okay, sure, maybe, if you don't actually, you're not able to prove that, but like, I, I just, I think we should speak up for the animals the way that we would want to be spoken up for. And I know if I was about to have my head cut off, I'd be like, um, yeah, you vegan, can you please start screaming? Can you start burning down buildings? Like, that's what I would want done if I was about to be killed. Sorry, but it's true. And it's like, you know, these animals deserve the best defense that we can give them. And... Sometimes you need to be harsh with people, and I guess what, people are just going to be jerks, and they're going to go and make their stupid comments, and, and be rude, and, you know, be disrespectful to the animals that they're causing suffering to? Well, screw them, I'm sorry. And guess what, if I'm, if I'm going to put someone off of veganism, okay, I highly doubt I would put anybody off of veganism that was already considering it, um... Like, the people are going to be turned off and they're never going to go vegan. We're already not going to ever go vegan anyway, so I don't really care about them. You know, if there's somebody that I think, ooh, is, is, is reachable, I'll use maybe a softer approach or I'll use whatever approach I think is needed. But, you know, to be afraid that, because people are like, oh, I'm never going to go vegan. It's because of people like you, I'll never go vegan. It's like, you were never going to go vegan anyway, so I don't really care. This person's name is One Question. Okay. Are you gay? No. No, I'm not. Are you? I don't know. Okay. Oh, DB, I know. I think I know what this guy's going to ask. I think I know. Okay. This actually isn't what I thought I was going to ask. I thought I was going to ask about the uh, the computer tabs and stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> You say you are a narcissist. Why do you say that? Are you really? If so, why? And would you rather not be nar uh, narcissistic? Narcissistic. Um, I mean, I don't know if there's like, you know, like a test or something. I, I think I think in some ways maybe I am, but like I'm kind of kidding. But I also think there's some there's some truth I think to that. Um, and would you rather not be? I mean. I, pro I probably would be, like, a better activist if I if I wasn't, because sometimes I I, uh, I do things um, that, I, that, I, that aren't even productive and they're not useful to the animals, and, of course, I should always keep the animals' best interests at heart and, 
and understand that, you know, is this actually going to help the animals? No, it's not going to. Then don't do it. But sometimes my ego definitely gets in the way. And I'm always saying, oh, don't let your ego get in the way. And, and of course, I'm completely guilty of of that exact problem. So, yeah, I would say, I would say a little bit. That's what I would say. Okay, Gabe wants to know, what are your thoughts on the ethics of eating farmed bivalves? Do you believe they deserve moral consideration, even though they supposedly are not sentient? Um, people always talk about this, and I never, I never know, because I haven't looked at the science or anything. Um, once again, if, if you were going to go and, and eat some form of animal, that would be the way to go because you know uh, I don't I don't know exactly the sentience uh, test on them but uh, if there's if there's if they're more if they're more lacking in sentience than you know obviously cows and pigs and chickens and fish and stuff then then I would say you know okay eat, eat that if you're going to like hey yeah you know, Alex, you know, ex-vegan Alex, you know, I hope you're eating that and you're not eating some steak. But, well, you know, I guess maybe we'll find out. But, uh, yeah, I, I, but why Why do we even need to do it if if we don't need to? To me, that's kind of like um, we're just so desperate to try to find, like, some loophole so we can keep eating animals. We can keep clinging on to, on to you know, exploiting sentient beings like if we can get away with not doing it then why would we um so i, w I would just say s stay away if you can because um if there's even you know a question benefit of the doubt right okay last question well last question on here anyways joe what do you think about pbc plant-based capitalism um, because Joey, uh, will make videos about that and say that, you know, like, oh, I'm going to, uh, I'll support anything as long as, you know, as it's vegan and, you know, people apparently, like, I, I guess I'm not in these circles, but like, I've never seen people that are like, oh my God, you're eating from that, but they have this one item that, that they sell that isn't vegan and it does this and it's like. Like, who cares? You're not supporting that. Like, again, he always would, you know, I think he said that about the plumber. Like, so if you call a plumber, then you're going to give them money to to go harm animals, probably. That's probably what you're going to do. You have to find a vegan plumber at a, a vegan business. You know, it's like, it's never going to happen. Um, I mean, if there's, if there's ways that you can go and... And support more ethical companies, then fine. If you don't want to go to Burger King, fine. But as long as the person's going to Burger King and they're not harming animals, like, who cares? Like, that's the only way we're ever going to change, is if we, everywhere we go, demand vegan products. Like, it's just, that's the way it has to be. Um, that's, you know... I, I think the whole plant-based capitalism thing is, like, it could be tested on animals, too. Which, I mean, even that, it's like, I'm always, you know, like, obviously, it, that's probably why I buy some things and they don't say that they're vegan. Because maybe they aren't, because maybe they are tested on animals. And it's like, how would you ever know? How would you ever be able to make a new purchase? You'd have to do, like, hours of research to try to find out, is this vegan? You know, like, was this tested on animals 15 years ago when it first came out? Or 50 years ago when it first came out? Like, I eat Ritz crackers. Those are vegan. They've been around since, like, what, the 60s or something? I don't know when they came out. It's like, did they test on animals probably back then? Uh, yeah, I'm guessing. But I'd say they're vegan all day because, you know, are they still currently testing on animals? Like, I, I don't know. I, I hope not. I feel like sometimes we could be, like, so paralyzed by... Oh my God! Is this ethical? Is this ethical that we go and we just say, "Oh my God, I can't, I can't make any decision because, oh my God, what if it's the wrong decision?" It's like if it's if it's not harming animals, you know, in the ingredients. A lot of times that's you know good enough for me, or maybe I'll buy it and then I'll do research afterwards and find out is there something else that's 
you know, hidden or something. And, and so many times you don't even know. Like, I, I was drinking Diet Pepsi. You know, I don't even remember when I stopped drinking Diet Pepsi, but I was drinking that while I was vegan. And then I come to find out, oh, there's some fish oil in it or something. And it's like, oh, I never would have known because it's not, you know, it's not on the ingredients. Like, so you have to do extra homework. And it's like, sometimes it could just be like so overwhelming where it's like, Sometimes, you know, you do, do the best you can because, of course, you're, you know, we're trying to live vegan in a non-vegan world and, you know, that's, that's tough because you can't always get everything exactly how you want it. So, you know, do the best you can. Support the most ethical companies you can if you want. If you want to go to Burger King and support their vegan burger, then do that too because we, we need, once again, Spectrum, we need all of it to be done. I think people actually left questions on my post rather than on the link. <laughs> Useless stuff. He asked, do you eat dog with mustard or ketchup? I mean, I don't know why you would limit yourself to mustard or ketchup. You could have both, right? Duh. Um, a bit of your background and where are you from? Thank you for your activism. So I'm in Western New York, which is in the United States. I'm not married and I don't have any kids. And I don't smoke or drink or do any bad things. I don't gamble. I don't run with scissors. Okay, well, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, you can let me know if there's any questions that you guys had maybe you had something and didn't see that there was, you know, the link to leave a question. So if you want anything answered, um, you can leave me a comment down below. Um, thanks again for the uh, 1,000 subscribers. Um, it means a lot to know that there are people out there trying to show support for their fellow vegan activists. And, uh, you know, if you ever want to start your own vegan uh, channel on YouTube, you know, I'll probably be there subscribing and watching your content. So, uh, just let me know if you start your own channel and, uh, thanks again, guys.